Hi hobby friends, let's talk about more limited palettes. Alright, so after last week's video I've been a little bitten by the limited palette bug. If you haven't seen that one yet, go check it out because this week we're building on the ideas from that video. So this time the palette is the same Mars Black, Titanium White and Yellow Ochre, but I've swapped out the Red Oxide for Quinacridone Magenta. Besides making you feel very clever when you work out how to say it, Quinacridone Magenta is an absolutely magical colour. I touched on this when I did the purple bit of the underpainting series, but what makes this colour so special, or one of the things that makes it special, is its temperature ambiguity. Magenta is caught between the quintessentially warm red and the prototypically cool blue bits of the spectrum, and as such, it only takes the slightest nudge in either direction to completely change the character of the colour. For a limited palette then, it should be a pretty great colour offering plenty of space for play. I've got a feeling this little mini palette might yield some interesting skin tones. Maybe a little pinkish, but still believable. So I've opted for one of the Kairik Acolytes I have left over from my skin videos. He won't end up typical Tsinchian turquoise, but hopefully we'll get something equally fun out of him. So, as you can see, I've been laying down a pretty dark base for those skin tones, mixed up from lots of magenta, a little tweak of yellow to warm it up, and a good slug of black. You'll have to forgive my slightly dodgy airbrushing on this, I got this new airbrush literally moments before I started filming from my lovely husband who is the best husband, and you won't convince me otherwise. The airbrush is a fantastic upgrade, but like any new tool, it took a little getting used to. The next layer for the skins was made simply by adding in more yellow to our mix, warming it up into a peach tone, and when that was looking good I started to mix in some white as well, drawing away some hue and taking up our value for a more natural Caucasian skin tone. Even more so than my regular painting, these limited palette experiments sometimes take a bit of back and forth. And at this stage I decided we'd lost a little too much depth in the shadows, so I mixed up a pool of pure black and magenta, no yellow at all. Just like last time, with some careful mixing we can almost kind of use Mars Black as a cool hue, and this mix, laid on in glazes from beneath, reads as a purplish colour. We'll be relying on that trick again later. Shadows deepened, I mixed up a very pastel yellow with just a hint of pink and laid in another pass of highlights. It was about 10pm at this point, as I say I was excited to try my new airbrush, so I called it a night and the next day I assessed our progress. He was looking okay, but I decided that the skin needed one more layer of highlights to really get it popping and reading properly. I also had finalised my plans for the armour panels and knew I wanted a nice pale skin tone to really set them off. So here's the next part of the plan, purple for the armour, shield and loincloth. You can see here how well that black works at cooling off the magenta, and how receptive the magenta is to temperature shifting. You can also see I threw in some straight yellow ochre on this little moon-faced mask. Roughly blocking in your various bits really helps when you're feeling out a scheme like this. Next up, we want to start shading that purple armour. The obvious choice here is to start putting white into our magenta black mix, or maybe magenta to bring it up in intensity, but I didn't fancy either of those options. White would desaturate our colour, which can work against the feeling of bright light, and it would start visually mixing with the skin tone. A pure magenta colour, on the other hand, is something I wanted to save for another job. Luckily, with limited palettes, that left me with literally one other choice. Yellow. Mixing our purple combo with yellow sustains some saturation, though admittedly slightly muddied, and because yellow is perceptually a brighter colour, we should get in the right zone for highlights. 
I'm a pretty flighty painter moving from one area to the next and back again, which makes it hard to weave all this into a straightforward narrative here, but let's say the next thing I blocked in was the scroll. Not too much thinking needed here, we have a natural yellow and a pure white on our palette, so mixing up a parchment colour is pretty simple. We do need to keep that separate looking from the white skirt though, so I opted for a distinctly yellowed paper and a much more uncomplicated white for the cloth. I guess I could have gone with a totally different colour for the cloth, like black, but a white skirt is at least one place I can nod towards the typical acolyte scheme, and it does have good pop on the mini. The shield and other armour continue to have their contrast pushed with purple black glazes and some pastel highlights, and when I was feeling good about that, it was time to tackle the properly magenta bit I'd been saving, those fantastic feathers. I think it's tempting to use one of your pure tones for a big section of the mini when working with a limited palette like this, and there are almost certainly situations where that would be preferable. But, mixed colours will always be slightly less saturated than pure tones, and generally, and this is a very broad generalisation here, minis look their best when the really powerful tones are saved for key accents. Since we have limits here, the punchiest pink has been saved for a feature element, and I've upped the ante by mixing in a good bit of white to make a really strong hue and value contrast. That's glazed over a magenta base with my airbrush to make a nice fade. Add in some feathery highlights with the brush, a pure magenta glazed in as a shadow, some recess shading to separate the elements, and an off-white feather shaft, and we have a nice little feature detail on our chappy here. Okay, no more running and no more hiding, it's time to tackle the last major block of this guy, the metallics. I'm not going to go into any depth here on non-metallic metals, there are plenty of good resources already, and we'll probably get to them on this channel at some point anyway, I bet. While you watch me futz with all that though, let me try and win you over to a cause. As I say, I've been really amazed at just how fun this limited palette stuff can be, and I thought, or actually one of my patrons thought, it might be extra fun if we all got in on the action. So how about it? How about a little community challenge? What I've done is prepare these three gamuts you can see here. We're calling them Mystic Haze, Brimstone Glow, and Bruised Sky. I've got some ideal paints that you can use, but of course this is open to anyone to try, so if you don't have exact matches, don't sweat it. The idea is just to have fun and learn something new. Just in case though, I've listed the colours in the description below. As you can see, the chap I'm painting today is of the Brimstone Glow Persuasion, and I plan on getting to each of these palettes in the next month or so, but to get involved, all you need to do is pick one and get a mini painted using just those two colours, plus any black and pure white of your choice. We can use the hashtag Limitless Minis on the old Instagram, and of course everyone is welcome to drop into the GRG Discord server to share their work. I'm going to say that the project is officially for September, but that just means that at the end of September we can do a roundup video featuring people's work, or perhaps even a live stream, I don't know, but I think it's going to be really fun, so get involved. Speaking of getting involved, before we hit the final reveal, let me say an enormous thank you to Tim, aka Timber, who's gotten involved patron style with the channel this month. Thank you so much, Tim. You are an absolute legend. If you like what I'm up to, you can join Tim as well and all the other superb patrons for the price of a cheapo coffee once a month, or hit the thumbs up and sub button here on YouTube for no money at all. It makes a huge difference to how many people can find the video. Right, here we are all done. I'm still really enjoying just how versatile something as crazily simple as two colours and a tint and a shade can be. It is a really engrossing, educative way to paint, and I actually think the results look pretty cool. But what do you think? Do you reckon you can do better? Well, now you know what hashtag to use and the Discord server to visit, so get out your paints, get out your mini, and start working. Cheers for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.